You know, all of the expressions of toxic narcissists, their expressions of hatred and anger and animosity and frustrations with you, it seems as though it's evidence of how much they hate themselves. My name is Kevin, and this is The Royal We. Now, one of the things you just can't escape from is the amount of frustration that is apparent on toxic people's faces as you try to resolve and work through problems with them. When you present ways in which you can work together and you try to present kindness and you try to present compassion and love and effort into a relationship with the toxic narcissist and you can plainly see their frustration level growing and intensifying and the hatred in their eyes and a lot of just confusion. And they look at you as though there's something wrong with you. And then these words come out of their mouths that resonate with their facial expressions, right? Like, how dare you? What's wrong with you? And now you're only doing what you feel a loving person is supposed to do. In fact, you do care for them. You do love them. But I want to propose to you this idea and this thought. The thought is, and the idea is, and the principle is something that we've all heard when it comes to toxic narcissists. And this is the reality that they hate themselves. They have abandoned themselves at some point in time, at some point in in their life, typically at a very young age. This is why they act like five-year-olds or six-year-olds or eight-year-olds when they're mad and throw temper tantrums because it's called arrested development. They're stuck at that age. They left themselves. They have abandoned themselves. You don't abandon yourself unless you what? Hate yourself, right? So now why is this a thing? Why am I bringing this up? Because think about this. Think about somebody who you would hate and detest if you knew them. How about uh, one of the the world's dictators of the past who had had done atrocious things to uh, his country and to people and to other people? Think of that person. Get that person locked in your mind. Now think about how much you can't stand them, right? Now imagine... If you and somebody else were talking about that person who did detestable things and suddenly you started saying, you know what? I like that guy. I like him. It's amazing. I I really love him, right? What do you think the person next to you would do? They'd look at you like, are you crazy? What's the matter with you? What's wrong with you? How can you like that? Okay. I think you know where I'm going with this. Narcissists operate in the same way. They know they are full of hate. They know they don't like themselves. They know they're mean, especially the overt narcissists. They grow an arrogance and a proudness of how mean they are. I believe covert narcissists in their own arrogance also believe that they are nasty, vile people. And so what happens is after they show you this vileness of them and you're going back to them saying, you know, I care for you. I love you. They're looking going, what? Are you crazy? There's something wrong with you. You are ridiculous. You're stupid. And then on with the name calling. How many of you can say right now, Kevin, that sounds kind of accurate. When I was trying to resolve and bring love, I was looked at as though I was stupid. And I know it's a twist because, again, we were led to believe in this life that if we are loving and kind to people, that we can find the compassion in them. But when we're talking about toxic narcissists, they know the lifestyle they live. They know that they are mean and cruel deep down because they've abandoned themselves. They know they're not capable of love. And at some point in time, they look at you as being the absolute crazy one for even liking them. They don't get it. It confuses them and it frustrates them. And this is why the more you try to resolve 
the relationship with a toxic person like that. The more, the harder you try, the crazier they think you are and the angrier they become with you. Again, it's as if somebody is saying, oh, I like, I like that old dictator. Oh, he's an amazing person. You'd want to shake that person. Are you out of your mind? Narcissists get themselves built up because they don't even like themselves. It's like they're standing outside of themselves watching you interact with this horrible monstrosity that they know is there, watching you pour love into that. And so the narcissist is saying, you're crazy. So the answer to this is, listen, your love is not enough to change anybody and in, in anything. These types of personalities need to come with to, to terms with who they are. They need to first learn to embrace and love themselves. They need the therapy. They need the coaching in their own. Otherwise, they will continue to be frustrated by your attempts to love them. I want to be a part of your healing journey and help you to understand these concepts more. Down below, you'll find links to schedule one-on-one -on -one time with me, one-on-one -on -one coaching. We could do telephone calls. We could do a FaceTime or a WhatsApp video call, or you could do an email uh, consultation if you'd like. You could also request a video to be sponsored and speak directly into your situation. This month, it is a great deal on that. Also down below, you can find links to Royal We Fellowship. This is an in-depth Bible exploration as we are reading through the entire book and applying it to our understanding of this toxic world of narcissism. Down below also, you'll find the link to Royal We Life Chat, which is every Monday night. There's all kinds of links and good stuff for you down there. And I'll be back with more videos for you right here on the Royal We.